Hi, I'm Sunny, and this is my podcast, Creator Created Creating, short and sweet mindset shifts for intentional life creation. OMG. <laughs> I'm starting this off with OMG because it is full on eclipse season right now and I am having an aha a minute and I just had to share this in case it resonates with any of you. So um, I was examining my relationship with social media and I was examining my desired connection, my desired relationship with social media and the current relationship that I feel in my body, in relationship to social media. And um, as I was doing that, what that led me to was examining one of my big identities that I have held since I was very, very small. All of my life, one of my big identities is that person that, um, that that kind of more quiet, and shy person, introverted person, that people would pull aside at parties, or people would pull aside at school in the halls, or people would confess their deepest, darkest secrets to in private, or just spew out all of their emotions, vent out all of them. They would just let out all this stuff with me that they did not normally do with others in real life. I was that person that people would confide in. I was that person that was just open and available and there to hear people and to reflect who they really were back to them, but mostly to just be there for them and allow this like darkness in them to surface and clear. And that was just like so innate that I didn't even recognize it till much later in life, but it was just something that I always was and did. And, and now I recognize that that was just a hugely cherished part of my identity that I thought that I was like, I'm this quiet, sweet, loving space for other people to get out all their stuff. (laughs) right? And that was really valuable to me. And I saw that because I could do that. You know, it felt natural to me. I could do that. But, and I love that. So I don't regret that. I don't think that's a mistake. I love that. It showed me parts of myself and it showed me them, which reflected things in me. It was all beautiful. And I realized the shift in identity that I'm having now, that identity is dying because, or that identity is going back into balance. I believe all of our identities are always like part of us and they just play little roles, but sometimes they become huge and enormous and bigger than their part should be. And they're like really in the forefront. And that part of me has been really in the forefront. <laughs> like really in the forefront. And so I, that part of me, I've felt that part of me dying. And that's, that's the one who was, as I've mentioned in one of my prior episodes, if you listen to it, that's the one that felt like that sweet, sweet sadness though. Sadness like a heavy sadness. And the reason for that was because there was no space for me in that. I was just the space for others. And there was no space for me. Now, I made total peace with that because I made my own space for myself in my own ways. 
So I took care of that and I took care of myself. I made space for myself in lots of other ways. And I enjoyed my own space for myself in lots of other ways. But in social interactions, that was my role. That was my identity in social interactions. In social interactions, I'm not there. I'm the space for you. And I was like, holy shit. I hadn't put it in those words before. The words, I'm not there. (laughs) I mean, I'm there, but I'm not bringing any of myself into the conversation. I'm not bringing any of my perspective into the conversation. I'm just being an unconditionally loving space for them to spew it out. And then for me to reflect back that they are wonderful and amazing. Because that is truly what I see. It's, that's not lip service or bullshit. It's like, that's what I saw. I would just show them who they are. Like, oh my God, that's not, this is not what I see. I, I see something amazing right here. And I would tell them this. So, but I would, in that, I made myself this space for dump your emotions and get to see how wonderful you are. But there's none of me in that. And we all need places to vent our emotions. That's healthy. We do that with each other. And it also helps each other to see each other. I know it's demonized a lot these days. But when I re-examined that, I'm like, it's not, it's not bad. It's been happening for thousands of years. Of people, we, we speak our emotions out to each other. We spew our emotions out. And sometimes that causes discomfort in one person or the other or both. <laughs> and hopefully, not always though, new clarity comes from that. But as I've identified that I no longer am this one who just wants to be the space for people to just vent, but not want to change it. I'm the one people come to when they're ready to transform their pain into empowerment. And when I found that phrasing in myself, when I, in my journal, I was like, Oh yes, that's the, that's the shift. That is the shift. But here was my struggle. My struggle with that, my beef with that, though, as empowering as that felt. Like, oh, yeah, I don't want to be not there. I want to be there and bring myself into that. I need to bring myself into that. Of course, social media is reflecting this feeling sometimes of I'm not there. Sometimes it reflects another feeling. And that's when I'm in touch with myself and feeling myself. But when I go into that old wounding and that old patterning, social media reflects my old wounding and my old patterning. (laughs) Social media reflects that feeling of, I'm not there. I'm just the space for you. But I don't need anything. And I don't have anything for you or any wisdom. Like, I'm just your space to just dump and feel better. Like, that was a huge, like, no. Yes, I want to change that. Yes, that's shifting into I'm not the one that's just the space for whatever. I'm the one people come to when they're ready to transform this pain into empowerment. That's the one that I'm becoming now. That's the one that I want to be now. Because that's the one that I've become for myself. (laughs) That's the one that I've become for myself. I used to also dump my pain back in the day. And then I started this journey many, 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 many years ago when I was about, really, I feel like it's just a lifetime <laughs> journey, but how, whatever. Yeah, probably around 30, 30 is when I really started to do that, do that work. But so, yeah, so I used to just vent and then I went into being the one that transforms her pain into empowerment. And that's who I want to be now. But I've still been carrying this other one who's not that. I've been holding that cherished identity in my heart field because it felt like that's where all my value is. Like, I really cherished that about me. And I really thought because people really valued me for that. That's where I received my value. That's where I saw my value. And so I was holding that as this cherished identity. And, but the other part of that, the, the thing that always kept me from making that transition, I can now see, 
is this concern I had was that, yeah, but I do not and I am not willing to be the one, be the kind of person who is with somebody who is, who's in their feelings and in their emotions and in their pain and thinks she has the best vo- the best advice or the best viewpoint or thinks she knows what that person needs and like it's just looking at that person like waiting for her turn to talk. I grew up with that and I do not want that. I do not want to be that. So I've had this big fight with that. And of course, anything that I'm holding a big fight to, I'm going to magnetize to myself. I'm going to magnetize experiences like that to myself because I'm fighting with it. So I've been working on neutralizing that because I, so when I was a child, I felt like certain people were just looking at me judging me when I was in my pain or my emotions and just thinking that they knew what I needed. They knew exactly what was wrong with me. They knew how I needed to be fixed. They knew what I should do. They knew they had all the right answers and they didn't see me at all. They just saw their advice. And I am unwilling to be that. So I had a powerful recognition in that moment. That was my soul saying, okay, I see some an experience that I do not want to recreate. I do not want to recreate this for anyone. So I went the extreme opposite of that, where I just removed myself entirely from the conversation. (laughs) And I'll just be the quiet one and you'll just say everything and I'll say nothing. And then you'll walk away being like, I feel amazing. Thank you so much. And I'd be like, wow, I'm so powerful. I didn't have to say a single word. (laughs) It's kind of crazy. So that's, I'm not going to demonize that. I'm not going to go into like, that was mentally unhealthy and stuff. I know all the therapist terms. I was raised by a therapist. I got it. But that was actually beautiful in a way because it allowed me to see the power of people just witnessing their stuff and also the power power of me witnessing their stuff. But now it's time for me to bring myself back into the conversation. It's time for me to bring myself back into that. But so, but my trouble was I'm not willing to like think that I know what this person needs because I'm very aware that I don't. Only they do. And I just want to them to feel safe and like loved and worthy to find whatever that answer is that they hold in themselves for themselves. That's what I want to help with. And I don't want to give any advice or opinions that are in the way of that because I've experienced that and I don't like it. So I was like asking myself, okay, what's the solution to that? What is the solution? And the first, I'm sure those solutions are going to be continuing to come to me and there's going to be a lot of them. But the main solution that first came up was just asking the person. (laughs) Just asking so I can keep myself from becoming this thing that I don't want to become because I've experienced the other side of that by asking the person what they need. Asking them to clarify, do you just need to vent or are you looking for any alternative perspectives here? And just allowing them to state that. So that's the first thing, is just asking people what they need, clarifying what they need in the situation. And also, more important, more importantly, yes, more, asking me what I need. <laughs> and if that feels true for me, authentic for me, and right for me, then I can be there in whatever way they have stated that they need. But not before I give myself unconditional love first. Because I'm not going to be able to extend unconditional love to them, really, unless I'm giving it to myself. Because otherwise, I'm not being a field of unconditional love. I'm being a field of, you're loved if you act this way. (laughs) But you're not actually wanted in this situation. And it just... It just all became so clear to me like, oh my God, of course I have this relationship with social media. 
Because all of my social conditioning, I was this person who I'm not there. I'm not really there. I'm just there for you. And so, wow, that's, that is powerfully shifting now. And now I'm bringing myself to the conversation and in a totally new and unique ways for me, which I'm doing through this podcast and through my articles and through my books and through my creations, I'm doing that, bringing myself into the conversation through those things in a way that people can decide for themselves what they take or leave. So I'm not giving advice to anybody who doesn't want to hear my perspective. I'm not, I'm not giving advice, period. I'm just giving my perspective. I'm giving how I see things how I deal with things. If it serves you, wonderful. If it t- doesn't serve you and it you don't like it at all, wonderful. Like seriously, because that helped you find more of you. That helped you define how you don't like it and how you do like it. So wonderful either way. <laughs> but I can't get to any of that if I don't clarify that first and if I don't love myself enough to bring myself into the conversation or even ask if somebody wants me in the conversation for all I know all of those people wanted me to say my perspectives that I didn't want to share with them because I didn't want to make them feel encroached on or judged or or hurt or anything if I dared to say what I might see and I don't have to do that and they don't have to hear that. And we can just give each other permission to do that. If, But the truth is, these days, rarely do I ever have a conversation like that. I always have mutually respectful and engaging conversations with the people in my life these days. But social media has been kind of like the last stand <laughs> where I've felt that mirrored old identity being reflected back to me. And today I just saw it so clearly. So I had to share that with you in case you relate. And if you do relate and you want to share about that, or you want to ask a question about any of this, you can do that at sunnychapman.com forward slash ask. And yeah. Okay. See you next time. Thanks for joining me today. And if you'd like to find out more about me and my work, you can find me at sunnychapman.com.